What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with some Raid Shadow Legends and it is Friday. I hope you guys are having a good Friday and ready for the weekend. Um, I'm in a little bit of a rough mood with the game right now because I've been farming Dragon for about four days just trying to get a speed set chest piece to drop with any kind of speed substats and I have utterly failed. Uh, that and I pulled a couple ancient shards tonight just for my... Uh, daily quest and wound up pulling a dupe pick sneal so it's been kind of an interesting friday uh, otherwise i'm not pulling charge for the 2x ancients uh, i've been saving all my shards here recently for the guaranteed champion events they have been running but today's video we're actually going to have a little bit of fun we're going to dive into some campaign speed farming on brutal 12.3 i actually discovered something kind of interesting and we're going to actually expose fellhound today uh, for a little interesting fact now, this kind of ties in with the video I made last week about how you really don't need to waste your resources on building a specific campaign farmer as long as you continue to upgrade uh, your starter champion. As you progress through the game, mid-game, and into end-game, you can use your starter champion to basically farm 12-3 in about 8-10 to 10 seconds, depending on the gear that you have on them, and as you develop uh, your Great Hall. And uh, it's kind of funny, I actually had somebody in a comment section argue with me that Elaine couldn't do it in 8 seconds, and I'm like, dude, I literally have a video on it with her farming 12.3 in 8 seconds, so <laughs> that may have kind of sparked this this uh, video idea in the first place, but what I wanted to do is just kind of go through a couple of the different farmers that I've used and kind of we're going to do a comparison and then we're going to talk about uh, the thing with Fellhound. Now I actually just built Fellhound today, uh, we'll go and take a look at the gear and everything later, but I, I actually just built him today, uh, the first time I've ever done it, I never really had a need for him before. And you're gonna watch him blow through this here on 12.3, five seconds, boom. That's the fastest, that's the fastest that any farmer can go, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. What we're gonna see here in a minute is that this five seconds, and let's just make sure he does it twice in a row. Um, I've been testing this and it's been working pretty well. This five seconds is actually not really that worth it. When you finally get through all the gear that you have to use to build them, so, what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to go through some of these other farmers that I use real quick just to kind of show them off a little bit. Where is... Uh, where's Biggin? Biggin's in here somewhere. Now, I used Biggin for a while when I was mid-game um, because I had built him for Arena, so his stats were pretty good anyways. I haven't touched his gear in a long time, so hopefully he can... Okay, of course, he, he does a weak hit the first time. There we go. So he's already screwed this up, but... He was actually doing just fine when I tried him before. So he's only going to do a 10 second run. But let's go ahead and re redo this because... Okay, there you go. If he one shots the first wave, then he can usually get through this. So there you go, two shots. So he's going to usually about seven or eight seconds. There we go. Okay. So Biggin is a pretty capable farmer here. He hits pretty hard. As long as you've got him crit capped, he should be able to go through and do this pretty easily. Uh, but I kind of want to prove a point showing these six to seven second runs because that's kind of what we're going to talk about with Fellhound here in just a minute. So Biggin's pretty consistent, seven seconds. As long as he's getting that critical hit, he's usually doing pretty good there. Uh, another farmer who's a lot more reliable than Biggin, though, is going to be Skull Crown. If I can find my Skull Crown here, let's go ahead and run her through. There's a reason I'm showing the legendaries and the epics first, because we're gonna we're gonna talk about some more budget options. See now there she screwed up. She didn't kill everybody in the second wave for some reason. So again, there every time I do this, I test it, I test it, I test it, it works just fine. As soon as I go to make a video, it fails. So you guys get to see all the failures here, which is good. A lot of other content creators will edit that out and not show it to you. But if Skull Crown goes through here and hits everything like she usually does, it should be about a seven second run. Okay, she got six. So six seconds there for Skull Crown. And I used to use her as well when I had built her for Arena. She's just in her Arena build here. There's really no special gear on her. You see she pauses there for some reason on, on Wave 2 uh, before she goes to Wave 3. But again, Skull Crown, pretty consistent six-second farmer. And that's gonna, that number is going to come into play here in just a minute. You're going to see. Of course, there she goes. She misses again. So not 100%. It's kind of like with a lane. Sometimes you're going to get to 8 seconds. Sometimes it's going to be 13. It just depends on if she hits um, the reset on her cooldowns. So Skull Crown coming in failing again with a 14, which again, 14 seconds is not terrible uh, at all. But we would rather see her doing this, uh, especially being a Void Champion, six seconds pretty consistently. So there we go. More often than not, she's going to get that six seconds. Now, the first ever actual speed campaign farmer that I built on my account 
is an uncommon. Uh, it's Saurus, and I did it because uncommons are incredibly easy to build. They're incredibly easy to book out, and they don't cost you a lot of resources to make. Whereas with Fellhound, you got to get the rare books to invest in him. I think the gear requirements on my Fellhound are a little bit stronger than what's on my Saurus right now, and he can usually do six to seven seconds. It just depends on if he. There's one wave he sometimes will. He won't one shot. Okay, but he got it there. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. He got it there pretty pretty easily at six seconds. And I still have a lot of work to do with him on some of his gear. And we're also going to see with the Great Hall that he's not getting an advantage like everybody else uh, because some of the Great Hall stats for him are not built up as much as the others. So there you go. Another six-second run from Saurus. Um, and if I'm being honest, the main reason I built him as the Speed Farmer is because I love dinosaurs and Godzilla. And Saurus is kind of like, uh, <laughs> like that mold. So... I just think he's cool. It's cool to use an uncommon to do this, so pretty cool there. So we got Source at six seconds, uh, and we're going to take a look at one last uh, farmer here. It's going to be Elaine, who we used and showed off in the last video that we did about this. So you can kind of see her. Now, she's pretty... Um, it determines how fast she goes and whether or not I think she hits um, Cycle of Violence here and resets her, her cooldowns. So, like, right there she did it, so she got the eight-second run. Now, sometimes she won't hit that. She won't reset her one of her cooldowns, and then she winds up getting like a 13 or 14 second run. But for the most part, she's fairly consistent. It's say maybe 85% of the time. You see there, she didn't get it, so we're going to have a little bit of a longer run here. And we got to wait for these two to take their turns. They have such a long animation time. So 13 seconds is usually going to be about the worst you're going to get uh, with a lane, unless she just gets 3%ed on every wave with weak hits or something. So... She's pretty strong, so there you go. She got the lightning arrow reset. So there we go. So, you know, eight seconds with Elaine. I showed you guys the gear on the last video. She's got some five-star gear still on her. Just the gear that I kept going through campaign with, building her up as the game progressed. I always used her as my campaign farmer until I got closer to the end game, and I just actually had the resources and kind of the time to waste building Saurus. That's one of the things I like to stress, too, is like you see all these videos are going to tell you to go build a champion. A lot of the times it's not good advice because especially if you're only in the mid game, you're trying to get into the late in the end game, you want to be using your resources for clan boss, for arena, uh, for getting your, your uh, dungeon farm times down. You don't want to be wasting it on a 12-3 farmer, which is why I've said, you know, just build your starter. Your starter can do the work uh, just fine. Now, what I wanted to show you again is Fellhound. So let's get back into Fellhound. We're going to we're gonna change things up a bit here to kind of prove a little bit of a point. Where is he? So let's see something here. Let's give him a couple of friends. Because what good is a campaign farmer if they're not actually farming with food? Because you, the whole point is to, uh, you know, level food up for those events and things. So we're going to run through with him here. Ooh. Ooh, what happened? He didn't get five seconds. He only got six seconds. <laughs> And I want this is important because I, I went and just to just to verify this, uh, I asked a bunch of people in my clan if their fellhounds could actually do five seconds with food, and nobody said yes. And I went back and watched just a couple of content creator videos about you know with, with the titles of him being the fastest campaign farmer in the game, and not one of them actually did the run with food. They all had him in individually by himself, which gives him the five second run, which technically makes him the fastest farmer. But you'll see here with food, it's six seconds every single time. Now, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go to Saurus again. And we're going to run up with Saurus. And hopefully he's not going to make me look bad here. Okay, he did. He, he screwed up the last wave like he sometimes does. So seven seconds with Saurus, but he can actually do, like I said before, his gear still needs work. And you're going to see in the Great Hall that he's at a disadvantage to Fellhound in just a minute. But Saurus can do it in six. There you go. So fastest campaign farmer is kind of up for debate and it's a little misleading because the only time Fellhound can do it is when he's by himself. He can't actually do a five second run when he has food with him, except in one case, which I'll, I'm gonna show you here in just a second. 
Let's just see if Soros can. Okay, there we go. Another six. So see, there. You, and I've said this before in YouTube comments on people's videos. I've said, look, you can you can do six seconds with an uncommon. Why are you wasting all these resources on a fellhound? And people argue with me all the time. Like, oh no, you can't. You can't do. He's the fastest, you know. But when you put food in, <laughs> he's not really the fastest. Um, but here's what the only situation where fellhound technically is the fastest campaign farmer with food is actually if you put him with three other dogs and that's why i had some of these uh, hounds spawn over here where are they these guys so watch this this is actually kind of interesting because he will do five seconds with these guys and that's because uh the dogs have the fastest running animation in the game so he can do this is the only time he can do five so if you're only if you're specifically farming with three other dogs will you get the five second run when you're trying to actually level up food so I thought this was really interesting. And, and I guess what happened today was I finally built Felhan. I'm like, you know what? I got the resources. I don't have anything else to work on. Screw it. I'm just going to make him and see if he's all that he's cracked up to be. And when I was running him in 12-3 with some other champs to level, I was like, why Why isn't he hitting five seconds? Is it because my computer's not working? I don't have unlimited frames on? Something's got to be wrong here. Why did I just waste 15 million silver and all this gear building this champion when he can't actually hit five seconds? And then I started to mess around with it. And I kind of noticed it was because of the animations of the food. So if you're going to use him to level food, you're not going to get the five second run. And unfortunately, like I said, I don't see a lot of content creators actually mention that. They don't show it in their bids. They only have him running by himself uh, in those vids to kind of show him off. And then they put the title, of course, the, oh, he's the fastest campaign farmer. So it's not really true in my eyes because what's the point of being the fastest campaign farmer if you can't do it with food that completely negates the purpose? But I wanted to show you the Great Hall because this is kind of where I was talking about Soros. You'll notice on my Void Great Hall, I have Attack done, I have Crit Damage done, and those are two stats that are definitely going to give Felhan a bit of an advantage in that race because uh, I built my Bat Eater comp for Clan Boss. I basically maxed out the damage for uh, Man Eater and my Pain Keeper with the Crit Damage and the Attack. You look at Spirit now, I only have attack percentage at 7, and I only have crit damage at 7. So Soros is losing out a little bit on some of those stats. So we've got that to kind of remember. And he's still doing it at the same speed as 6 seconds. It's not super consistent. He's getting 6, 7 sometimes because of the Great Hall is not quite as developed uh, on Spirit. Because I went for Resistance, and I'm going for HP because I have two Duchesses that I use on the account. So that's one of the reasons uh, I was kind of focusing on those areas with Spirit Great Hall before that. So... Kind of interesting. Uh, I just found it very interesting today when I went through and actually did that. And we'll take a quick look at some of the gear on these champs real quick that we used. Uh, you can see here's Big in here. And again, I have not touched his build uh, in quite some. Actually, maybe I did because it looks like I, he was missing boots. And I think I just threw on uh, these attack boots from the Instinct set that I had made in the Forge because they had a decent crit rate roll. And that was just to get him crit capped at 100%. Otherwise, his gear is pretty old, uh, but you can see here he's 5300 attack, 100%, 244. I think his master, and he's actually doesn't he doesn't have a. Uh, yeah, see that's what, what was I using him with the war master? Wow, that's that's terrible. Uh, it's you can tell it's been a while since I've used him <laughs> for anything. That might have been for faction wars. I think that's really the only place I've used him is faction wars. And then my skull crown is somewhere in here, and she's actually like super slow because I just built her in a savage set for. Um, my blender comp with Farc on the fat, so that's why she's only at 77% crit rate and 250 crit damage, 5200 attack, and again, I haven't really touched her in a long time either, I just used her in the blender comp really, that's the only spot, I didn't use her in Faction Wars, but just to take a quick look at the gears, you guys can kind of get an idea, and let's take a look at Felhound, I think he should be right here, so I built him today, again, and like I said, I actually had to put him in a Swift Parry set to get the, uh, to get the crit damage up to where I needed it to be. So you can see here, we've got him in a defense banner. We've got him in a crit damage amulet and an attack ring with a defense roll because he actually does benefit from defensive stat. And that's kind of the funny thing on him is you have to build him for defense and attack. So you can see in order to get him to be five and six seconds, we gotta go 3,200 attack and almost 3,200 defense. Uh, 100, he's crit cab, 257 crit damage. On him there now interestingly enough his masteries are only i only got him done down to here that's really as far as you need to go if you're going to use him as a campaign farmer uh, if you want to use him everywhere else you probably want to finish him out but yeah so i spent a ton of silver building him and it turns out it's not even worth it because the source that i have 
who's in kind of ragtag mixed gear here. If I can get him in like Savage set or something, that gives some better statistics. You can see him, you know, we got to run him. We're at 4,200 attack. Um, 98 and 218. He's not even crit cap. Poor guy. We have to, have to fix that later. And his crit damage isn't anywhere near Felhound's crit damage. Again, he's not getting those bonuses from the Great Hall. And uh, kind of take a look at his masteries here. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a lot easier to build this uncommon than it was to build Felhound. Um, you know, just to, to keep farm 12 3. And then here's Elaine again. She's still in her four star or her five star gear from the other day. Um, at some point, we'll go back and revisit her gear because I, I still use her in a couple areas. And you can see her stats are not super impressive either. And, you know, she's doing eight, eight seconds for us. So, yeah, very interesting findings, I think. Uh, and I think we can maybe say that Felhound is not technically the fastest campaign farmer anymore because he's basically tied with Skullcrown and, and Saurus, at least on my account, uh, and probably much better gear than either the two of them are wearing. And again, Saurus is not even at the stat level and missing some of those great haul bonuses. So uh, just kind of a fun video I wanted to put together. I thought this was kind of cool. And uh, again, my whole point of this is to show you, you don't have to go out and spend a ton of resources and invest your good gear in a 12-3 farmer. Uh, because like I've said a hundred times, you can use your campaign farmer um, as your, I'm sorry, you can use your starter uh, as your campaign farmer, as long as you're keeping the gear updated. And you don't have to go off chasing these weird builds on rare champions when you could be using your resources to invest in your clan boss or your arena or making your dungeon times better or working on your doom tower runs. Much There's much more important areas of the game to focus on than 12-3, um, you know, farming for silver and farming for champ training. And uh, I don't know, I, just, I, I get a little aggravated when I see these videos and I think they're a little misleading for players because a lot of the content creators don't mention that, hey, I'm already an in-game player. I have a bunch of resources to waste. So I went ahead and built this rare to farm campaign. You know, I see videos about, oh, these these 10 rare nukers you need to six star. And I'm just like, no, 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 absolutely not. You do not need to six star any rare nuker besides your starter champion. You can use them up until mid or in, mid game or toward the late game, where then you can just actually build a good nuker when you pull one. You don't have to <laughs> go run off and chase Orgrin Jailer or Marquez or any of this stuff and try to invest all this gear and, and stats into them. It's just, it's it's insane to me sometimes, some of the advice I see that's that's going out there. And you wonder why some players get stuck at certain points of the game. It's because they're too busy trying to build silly stuff like this instead of just waiting until the point in their account they actually can build it without hurting other areas of the game. So just kind of a message I wanted to stress and uh, why I wanted to show you guys a, a good in-depth look at this and, and to see that you don't actually have to go out and do... Uh, these specialized champions to be able to farm 12-3 in the campaign for your champ train. You can just get away with having a well-built starting champion uh, that you've upgraded as you've gone through and played the game. Uh, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about anything that you saw in the video, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll do my best to get you an answer as soon as I can. As always, hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I will see you again next time.